Hello and welcome. Uh, we've got something a little bit different today as we're going to be talking about unbricking your GPU. Now, bricking GPUs can happen in a variety of ways from pushing the overclocks too high, uh, poor installation, dust buildup, or trying to reflash your BIOS and failing. And it can sometimes look a little bit like a minefield if you frequent online forums. One of the most common ways that people brick their GPU is with reflashing errors. Now there's a lot of Windows based tools that can auto reflash your GPU uh, to the very latest firmware very easily. And while over 99% of the time they work, there's always that small percentage where it fails. And often because the users that are using these quick tools do not, they've not really got a fundamental understanding uh, of why it failed, the cards often end up on eBay as spare parts. And that, funnily enough, is why we find ourselves here today. An HD 6950 that has had both BIOSes bricked uh, when somebody tried to reflash it up to a 6970. So, if you find yourself in a similar situation, hopefully the steps in this guide is going to help you out. So, first of all, we know the problem. The GPU has two bad BIOS, which mean we can't use the GPU to boot into Windows. So this is going to mean that you're either going to need to run the computer on the integrated graphics, uh, if your CPU supports it, or a PCI display adapter. And yet it's important to leave the PCI Express slot free here. Uh, so for this guide, I'm going to be using Intel's iGP, and the only other thing you're going to need is a USB stick. So from there, we're going to want to remove the bricked GPU and plug everything into the motherboard to force the computer to boot on the integrated graphics. From there, we want to enter into the motherboard BIOS, and then in the settings menu, you, you might differ from my setup, but you want to find the integrated graphics configuration and make sure that instead of being set on PEG, which is the PCI graphics card, uh, we want to set it on IGD, which is forcing the computer to boot up running the integrated graphic. So you then hit F10, save changes and restart your machine, and you'll land on the desktop. Now it will look a little bit funny, but don't worry about that. Just shut the computer down and reinstall your bricked GPU. Now that we've landed on Windows, we can actually start to repair the GPU. Now, in my case, I tried every single possible in-Windows method and nothing worked. I tried ATI Flash, RBE, and even started working in the administrative command prompt. Uh, but nothing works with this card. So this guide is going to be using the bootable drive method, which is a little bit more time consuming, but it does actually have a better track record at unbricking stubborn GPUs. To kick things off, we're going to need to download a few things. Uh, the links to these is going to be in the description below, and I recommend that moving each one of these downloads into a new folder on the desktop, just to keep things tidy. So, first off, we're going to need a working BIOS. If you head over to Tech Power Up's VGA BIOS section, you can download the relevant BIOS for your card. If there's multiple versions, at the end of your search, just choose the latest version, and save the .rom file in this new folder. It's important at this point that you rename the file something with eight characters, something like BIOS.ROM, which is what I'll be using in the example here. Next up, we need ATI Flash, not the ATI Win Flash, which is for Windows, uh, but since we're going to be doing this through DOS, it's just plain old ATI Flash. Again, head over to Tech Power Up, or use the link in the description, and download the program. It'll download in a zip file, so if you just extract that executable into your folder on the desktop. Finally, we're going to want to download a tool called Rufus, which is located at the link in the description. Uh, at the time of recording, the latest version is 2.11, so just download this executable and locate it in your desktop folder. Once you've downloaded all these files, uh, you're ready to create your bootable drive. Insert a USB stick and run the Rufus file. And you need to make sure that your USB drive is selected in the drop down menu. Uh, the file system is set to FAT32, and the bootable disk option is set to FreeDOS. Uh, please note that doing this is going to erase everything on your USB, so bear that in mind before proceeding. Once that's completed, your bootable USB drive will now appear in Windows like this. If you open the drive, you can just check that the contents are the same as what's shown on the screen. We then want to copy the BIOS file and the ATI flash file into the bootable drive. Now, at this point, it's a wise idea to rename the ATI flash file, remove the version number, and just call it ATI flash. So once you've done that, that is you created your bootable drive. Uh, so what we're going to do now is restart the machine and enter back into the motherboard BIOS. 
So we need to change the boot priority so it's looking for the USB drive rather than Windows installed on the hard drive or SSD. Uh, as you can see here, I've already got uh, the bootable drive set up and to be perfectly honest with you, don't worry about leaving it on after completing the flash. As long as the bootable drive is not plugged in, your computer is going to boot up as normal. So once you've changed the priorities, you can hit F10 and restart the machine. So you're now going to be greeted with FreeDOS. It's a very simple DOS operating system. If you type DIR and hit enter, you're going to see the contents of your bootable drive. It's going to look very familiar to what you've already completed in Windows. From there, you want to type atiflash.exe and hit enter. And you're going to see a few screens. Now these screens are just explaining to you what the different commands do. It's worthwhile to kind of read them. But if you just want to crack on, then feel free to just continue this. This time we want to type ATI flash space minus F space minus P space zero space BIOS dot ROM. Exactly what's shown here. And this is going to force the program to flash that BIOS dot ROM file that we created earlier onto your GPU. It's going to tell you that it's been completed, it'll be verified, and then it will ask you to restart the system to complete this vBIOS update. So remove the bootable USB drive and restart the machine. Now you're going to end up back on the Windows desktop, but at this point we're still using the integrated graphics. So what we're going to do is we're going to restart the machine again and go into the motherboard BIOS and change the graphics adapter preference back to PEG, which is going to use the PCI Express graphics card. Save your changes here and restart the machine and then turn it off. We're then going to want to remove all the cables that's plugged into the motherboard and attach them onto the graphics card. Once this is completed, hopefully your flash will have worked and you'll get end up back on your desktop using your PCIe graphics card. Anyway folks, thank you so much for watching this video. If it's helped you at all, feel free to subscribe and leave a like and I'll see you again next time.